Thank you all for coming. Welcome to the virtual Pasadena Senior Center, today's program on Zoom and about Zoom. Uh, I'm Annie Lasky, the Director of Events here at the Senior Center. I'll be your host today. It's, it's just, it's so, so great to see so many people joining in. Uh, lots of new names and faces. Uh, thank you for tearing yourself away from the TV news uh, and joining us today. So I, I know that it's, it's like a physical difficulty to, to remove yourself from, uh, from what's going on. So thank you for joining us. Uh, I assume that most of you are members of the Senior Center and familiar with what we do, but I also just wanted to welcome anyone else who is new, who's friends of Senior Center members or who heard about it through uh, some, someplace else. We're a recreation and resource center founded in 1960. We're an independent nonprofit organization that's donor and member supported. We really appreciate the incredibly generous support we've had through these past many months, these difficult times when our facility remains closed um, and except for uh, a few social services and we have to engage our community online, something that's pretty much new for all of us. We've been able to continue holding classes, lectures, parties, concerts, uh, trying to do everything we can connecting the community uh, via Zoom. Our winter class session starts this Monday. And if you haven't taken classes from the Senior Center uh, via Zoom before, it's, uh, it, it works pretty amazingly well. I, I just urge you all to find a class you're interested in and sign up. I personally take two dance exercise classes and I love them. It just, uh, it, it really gets me through the week. Uh, so, Go ahead, go online, PasadenaSeniorCenter.org, sign up for class. Uh, you do not have to be a member to join our online classes as you did have to be a member when we were in person. So now for today's program. Zoom is an amazing tool and I cannot even imagine being isolated, working from home as I have been since March 17th uh, without the ability to connect with people via Zoom. However, as we all know, it also has its limitations and it can be very <laughs> strange and disorienting. It can be um, hard to understand at first. I'm still learning about it. We're all still learning about it. One of these limitations is that the larger the group, the harder the conversation becomes. Uh, because we have so many people on today's call, we're going to ask that you use the chat function for most of the, of the time. Uh, and so that uh, we'll be chatting and commenting via the chat function, not via audio. And yes, if you don't know how to use chat, we will be sharing with you how to do that. From time to time during the program, we will um, allow you to unmute your microphones and, uh, and ask questions um, verbally. But for the most part, because of so many people on the call, we'll be keeping the, the, the questions uh, to the chat function. So I am relatively new to Zoom, having had to learn all this uh, since my first Zoom event in May. But we have two wonderful people with us who are going to really be the people to navigate you through this Zoomiverse. Uh, first of all, I'd like to welcome Pete Matus. He is our online classes and events coordinator at the Senior Center. And if you want to add yourself to the spotlight, Pete, that would be great. Um, I call him our Zoom czar. And really, it is because of Pete that all of this is online. He troubleshoots all of our, uh, all of our Zoom stuff, sets everything up, um, and really has been uh, just, just completely amazing to, uh, to help us get through all of this. He will be dealing with most of the uh, technical details and the technical questions that we have throughout the program. I would also like to welcome Lynn Meal. Professor of Psychology and Kinesiology at Occidental College. So she's had to be teaching online quite a bit these last couple of months. She is also a member of the Pasadena Senior Center Board of Directors. Uh, so please welcome Lynn and Pete. And we're gonna start off uh, with uh, Pete taking us through some technical, uh, technical things, introduction to Zoom, 
And so I think I will unpin myself and Lynn, and we will uh, we'll leave it there to uh, uh, to Pete and go for it. So, how's everyone doing? Good afternoon. Um, if this is the first time you are seeing me, you may have seen my emails that have gone through. Um, I've had a lot of communication with a lot of you guys, but this may be the first time you're putting a face behind those emails. So thank you for joining us. So I want to go through some of the things on Zoom. This is one of these things that given, you know, if I could go back in time, I would have put so much money in stocks in Zoom because I don't think anybody would have expected us to go this long. What started off as one month, went to two months, to all summer, to maybe the end of the year, to who knows when. But Zoom is also evolving, just like everything else, um, to accommodate online classes, not just for Pasadena Senior Center, but schools in general are using it, businesses are using it. So I want to just give you a quick overview of some of the technical aspects of Zoom, um, where you could find some stuff. So if you look on my screen right now, this is basically the main screen. This will maybe change a little bit depending on what platform you're on, whether you're on a Windows platform, whether you are on a Mac platform, uh, Android tablet, but they all pretty much kind of stay the same. So you guys all did a great job. You're here with us. So you've clicked the link, you've gotten in here. But there are some that just send out a meeting code and uh, a passcode. So if you ever get in a situation where you're like, hey, the meeting ID is this, but there is no link to click, this is a place you're going to start. You're going to click join right here. So these are just stills. I can't click anything, but I do want to just show you this part right here where it says join. Once you click that button, it is going to give you an option to enter meeting ID. You go ahead, you enter that number that was given. Sometimes there's a passcode, sometimes there's not. But the following screen, other than that, will be the passcode option. So you would want to go ahead and uh, click that. Your settings is typically in your upper right hand corner. I will show you an example of somewhere else it probably could be, but it's usually only one or two options. Your settings will be your hub to any other things that you guys will need to use. This is actually off of an iPad. So from this option, you see the setting is actually right here, but the join new meeting, um, if you were to have a schedule, a bunch of classes. So um, if you're like me, you will see that there's like a bunch of different options. Sometimes you could have 10 different meetings going on. Um, if you're trying to start a meeting with just a friend, you could always click this new meeting and then it'll give you the option of starting your meeting. And then you could get the passcode that you could share out with people to join your own meeting. Share screen option. Basically what I'm doing right now, I'm sharing my screen. Next slide. So I just wanted to touch bases, just a couple options that I do use. Um, a lot of this is just because I'm using a couple different screens uh, when I do do my zooms, but this right here particularly is what I find the most useful and I do want to share with you. This is only this will only work if you are using a PC or if you are using a MacBook or a Mac of any sort um, that is not a tablet or a phone. The meeting controls is where you see and I'll show you the meeting controls one more time. I love to have those accessible. Because a lot of the times, uh, like Annie had said, she may use a chat function, you may use uh, a reaction, and you're scrolling down with your mouse trying to find where your meeting controls are. So I always have this connected because then they stay there and I don't need to be looking around for it too. So all of these options um, is kind of like I tell um, Kaylin. Some of you guys have met my daughter Kaylin uh, when she was learning to Zoom. Um, these are all different options that. I, I invite you guys to play around with. Uh, but as I told Kaylin the same way, uh, whatever you click, know what you're clicking. And if it seems to do something weird, click it back or unclick it. One of the two options. But uh, you will get all your options from this area. And if you're on a tablet, um, it's not as extensive because there's a certain limitation as to what you could do on a tablet. Now, this is probably the most when people are saying, well, I can't hear you. I, I can't hear anything. This step could come just as quickly as it pops off, pops on. This join with computer audio. So a lot of the times we're excited. We're trying to get in Zoom. We're clicking. You could easily off-click this. And in return, you will see 
on the bottom area right here where it says join audio, but this box will be gone. If you don't click an option on this, what'll happen is you won't hear anything. It'll just be like someone talking to you like, and you won't hear anything. If you do for whatever reason, just click off this, you can always go back down to this audio section right here, click it and it will re-pop up, join with computer audio. And that's the options you guys wanna go with. Now on the flip side, I did personally, uh, like I said, Zoom is always changing around stuff. So when I use a separate monitor, it does not wanna play any type of sound from my laptop itself. So if you do find your option where you see the microphone lit up, such as this, but it's not doing anything or you can't hear anything. Once it's got looking like this, it means that you have clicked the computer option as a computer sound. So there is a little arrow that you see right here. Once you click this arrow, you will see a bunch of different options. Whoop. Let me get back to that option. So once you get here, you will see that there's different settings. So if you have external speakers, um, so separate speakers that are from your laptop or your desktop, you can go ahead and you could click those or you could just click the computer screen. But um, another thing I've shared uh, also with my mom as well, if you don't hear anything, this will be your second option that you're gonna wanna look toward. Only because chances are, this is where the problem is gonna lie. Um, so I hey, tend to- Pete. Pete, yep. I'm just going to the, the very first thing they should do is make sure the sound is turned up on whatever device <laughs> they are on, because that often is... I can't hear anything. And it turns out that I just pushed the mute button on my computer. Absolutely. Thank you, Annie. That is first and foremost. Yes. A lot of the times I do turn off my speakers as well. And I am wondering, and I am here, but yes, uh, speaker volume is up. Um, also your speaker volume is up, not only on your speakers, but also on your computer itself. Because even if your computer audio is up on your speakers that's external, if your internal computer speakers are turned down, you still won't hear anything. So you wanna make sure that you have both speakers turned all the way up. Thank you, Annie. So that would be your next option at where you are at over here. Your next option is your visuals. So we wanna make sure we see videos if you're choosing to show your video. These will be your option. If you have a red line across it, such as this, it means there is no video. This is the default picture that I have um, under my profile, me holding a piece of bread. Uh, but you know, you, you could have any type of video or profile picture or none at all. Um, and if my, if my uh, camera is off, this will appear. But you can also double check that this line is crossed out and that'll mean that you are no longer on video. Now there's a couple different options that you'll see people use as well. If you click the little arrow once again, right next to it, you will see this in this area right here. What this does, this gives you your video options. Now you go to your video options. What you want to do is um, even if, oh, it took me back one. You can go ahead. Uh, my recommendation is just leave it alone. Um, there is one option that I didn't put on here but if you go to your video settings, there is one that says enable HD. Um, if you have a really good internet connection or a decent, you can go ahead and click that and it'll kind of make your image a little bit better. That's one option that you could use in that setting. Uh, a lot of the times you'll be on Zoom and you'll see people look like they're in the Bahamas or they're up north, they have a log cabin behind them with snow. Um, those are virtual backgrounds. Now, as pretty as they are, it wreaks havoc on people's bandwidth because that is broadcasting kind of like when you're on the news or people are on the news and they have the green screen with the weather, weather's here today, weather's here. That's essentially what it's doing. It's broadcasting a green screen. So if your internet connection is kind of choppy and you have that virtual background enabled, chances are you're gonna really downgrade your Zoom uh, quality with that. My recommendation is not to use the virtual backgrounds um, because not only does it affect you, but it affects everybody else as well. Um, especially if all of us here, uh, 63 people last time I checked, 67, had a virtual background, this would be moving slower than a snail. Um, 
Also with that, the vid, uh, video filter, um, Zoom has got super creative with. If you wanna be sitting there talking like I'm talking to you right now, it allows you to put a little Santa hat on. It can make a crazy looking beard. Um, so when you see choose video filter, that's what it's talking about. This is from, uh, I, this, I believe this is my iPad. This is what the settings will look like for that. If you click the more option, which is on the top, you will see the different areas. Oh, and it keeps taking me back. That's what happens on a, on a mouse that wants to do its own thing. Let me go back. Um, if you go, you click on the upper right hand corner and you see more, if you are on a tablet, you will see all your other options right there. There's a raise hand feature where if you want to ask a question, you could go there. Um, your meeting settings, anything you need to kind of change around the meeting area um, is there. If you want to do a virtual background, that is an option right there, as well as those little reaction emojis, uh, clap hands, thumbs up, um, anything to kind of uh, go ahead and uh, lively up your Zoom session. Um, a lot of people do ask me what original sound is. Uh, for the most part, what Zoom does is Zoom does a great job of trying to enhance your, your voice. So as I'm speaking to you, I'm speaking to you in a regular tone. And if I were to be standing 10 feet away, I could speak probably in the same tone. And what Zoom will try to do is pick up my voice as best as possible. And especially with a lot of the background noise going on, it suppresses the background noise. Original sound, what that does is if you've ever been in a Zoom where people aren't sharing their computer screen, but you could still hear the music loudly, that's what original sound does. It basically gets rid of the background suppression. Um, there's no real voice enhancement. So what it'll do is basically make it sound like a live mic. No enhancements, no any of that sort. Your chat, your chat options is right there. So if you were on the tablet, you would go ahead and you would click that. Um, I'll show you what it looks like. In fact, I'll take it back one. If you are on a desktop or a PC, your chat option typically is right here. Now, some people do have this whole bar. They actually have that on top. So it would be up in this general area right around here, or it's down here. So that's where your chat would be. You would click that chat and then you would basically, anyone who you see is in this. So in this case, there's a, 68 of us in this Zoom call. What you would do is uh, you have the option of sending out a message to all 68 people, or once you click it, you will see a name on toward the bottom area with another little arrow, and you can specifically send a private message to somebody. Um, so that's how you would use that chat option. There's me, I'm smiling for you. But this is what a share screen option. So a lot of the times when we're doing Zoom, uh, you want to focus in on just the speaker. A lot of times when we're doing the classes uh, with Zoom, we spotlight like Annie did earlier with um, with Lynn, myself and her, uh, where you only concentrate on the speaker. And we do that a lot with the instructions so that everyone can see. Now, if you were to click the upper right where it says view, you have two options that are right there. A speaker view who will only speak, you only see the person who is speaking or even if the person is highlighted, you can click that gallery view, which if you were to do that right now, you will see 25 people on one page and another little arrow toward the side, typically around this area. That'll take you to another group of uh, pictures that are there and um, so on. So gallery view, you see everyone's speaker view, you keep it only to the instructor or whoever is giving a presentation. So in a nutshell, that's basically where we're at with Zoom. Um, there is one thing, just like anything else, um, with all good is sometimes some bad. Um, it's not something that happens all the time, but I do wanna make you aware of it. Zoom has the ability to enter your computer if need be. Uh, what you can do if you are really struggling or you have done something where you are in a Zoom call and you really can't figure something out, they've kind of used it uh, it's a remote access, essentially. So if you ever were to see a box come up like this, where it says, Pete Matus, oh, that's Kaylin. Pete Matus is asking for your permission to remotely control your desktop. What that'll happen is if you grant that person permission, they will have full access to your computer. And 
I highly recommend the only way you grant someone permission is if you really know who they are and there's a specific purpose as to what you are doing. Because at that point, they can lock your computer, they could do whatever they want. Um, if they do that before you end the Zoom call, there's nothing really much you could do to get that area back. So you can actually, um, there's two different options. One, this one specifically says control your desktop. Um, there's another one that says control your Zoom app. So if you really need help and somebody's trying to assist you remotely with your Zoom app, my recommendation is to just give them access to the Zoom app and they could kind of poke around and help you out in that way. But again, unless you really, really know the person, I would almost never grant permission. And uh, it has happened, doesn't happen all the time, but um, some people will push their luck, um, especially if it's on a Zoom of a person you don't necessarily know, to try to see what you have on your computer. And with that, I'm back. Okay. Um, I'll just uh, mention as well, and Pete, you can elaborate on this. Like I'm working off a PC and so it can look very different from a tablet or from a phone. And, and as we had been talking beforehand, not only can it look different from device to device, but talk a little bit about the changes Zoom makes every other day. <laughs> So Zoom, um, we were actually discussing this in a nutshell. Um, Zoom, and I honestly, as much as Zoom has been around, they've been around for a while. I don't think they've expected this tidal wave of users. So when Zoom first started, all of the things looked different. So if you were using a PC, it looked different from Mac. If it, looked dif if it was on a Mac, it looked different than a phone. It looked different than an Android phone. Everything looked different. Then they released an update where they all kind of looked the same, which was my favorite update, like because I could answer anything at that point because it looks the same way. Well, they've made changes again. And I think a lot of reasons why they make these changes is because everything is different. Um, an iPhone is much different than an Android phone and a PC is much different than the Mac. So to keep things universal and um, uniform sometimes may cause problems for one or the other. And um, if you've ever been in a Zoom uh, where you're waiting for it to start, but the host says, I've started like 20 minutes ago. That's a lot of the problems that they were trying to keep things uniform and it just wasn't working. So um, they do make changes from time to time. Um, some, I really don't know why, but they add stuff, they take stuff away. They add stuff, they take stuff away. So um, my whole life is basically Zoom. So from time to time, at least once a month, I'll go in and just play with all the different options and see what they do. Um, especially when it comes down to managing 10 different Zoom accounts. Um, that's That would be my recommendation is just kind of fiddle around with it and see what works best. Or um, if you know you're doing a presentation of any sort, if any of you guys are doing a presentation, always go in there at least a couple days before and see where Zoom is at um, in case you're anticipating to see something and it turns out it's not there and you kind of have to go searching for it. Okay, there's a, a question in the chat, Pete. Okay, let me see. So do you recommend original sound? Depending. Um, if you're just talking like this, if you're just talking like this, no. Um, original sound is great. Or um, keep it off only because there's background. Like there's uh, trash trucks that were just passing by or some trucks. Um, I could hear it, but I'm sure you guys can't because Zoom does a great job of filtering out the nonsense and just focusing on the person that's speaking in itself. Now, um, which it'll probably end up happening again, we had a Zoom birthday party for my daughter last year where um, we had someone dress up like Marshmallow, who's a DJ, um, and he was DJing live for Kaylin. Now, that, yes, I recommend turning on the original sound because then it sounded like we were in a nightclub. It didn't filter out any noise. It didn't try to do anything. Um, it did go ahead and just give the original sound of if as though we were in the room. So I do recommended if you are trying to do a party of some sort then yes i would enable the original sound and you could go ahead and make that an option um through your settings okay Kranita raised her hand um you can unmute yourself or i'll ask you to unmute um there you go um go ahead and ask your question 
Okay, I've tried to get into Zoom a few times, you know, to start an account, I guess, uh, because I have different uh, devices. I'll get a new one and I try to put Zoom on, but it seems like some Zooms, they want you, is there an easy way to get into Zoom where you're not going to have to pay? All you're trying to do is get a Zoom account so that all, you can join the meeting? Yeah, all Zoom accounts are free. The only difference is uh, what you can do with the free account and what you could do with the paid account. So everyone has the ability to have a meeting. And I believe the time limit off of a free account is 45 minutes. So no, I'm sorry, I'm sorry I, excuse me. Excuse me. I, I don't want to have a meeting. I want to join a meeting. That's all I want to do is join oh, a meeting. Then, then you're free to join. Uh, in fact, most of our members don't have a Zoom account even when they take the class. Um, all you would basically need to do, you don't need to sign up for it. You don't need to pay for it. All you would need to do for the most part is download the Zoom app. And if you have the meeting ID or you have the link, you click it and you go right in. You don't need to sign up for anything. And even at that, a lot of people choose not to want to do a Zoom app. You can actually go to zoom.us and you could join straight from the browser. So it's like you're surfing the internet and it's like a live stream. Now, the quality of that Zoom will really, really be uh, downgraded if you use it through the browser. So I recommend at very best, at least just download the app from zoom.us and you never need to, you never need to sign in. All you really need to do is uh, just type in the meeting ID or click the, click the link and you'll be in. Yeah, okay, and so. if you are on this Zoom call today, you have that app. Right, on this device I do. But when I try to put it on another device, then I get that's where it gets confusing because it looks like it wants me to do it wants a bunch of personal information and I don't remember putting a bunch of personal information on my phone before. Yeah, the um the phones are really it's it's an app essentially um just like anything else. But if you were to break down each all it does is do it in one shot. So it looks like it's just downloading an app. But in all actuality when you're even downloading an app uh, on your phone, it's taking, um, it's linking itself into your contacts. It's linking yourself into things. The, if you were to read the fine print, I should say from like the, uh, wherever platinum we're downloading, whether it's Google play or the app store, it'll tell you that it requires this, 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 and this, um, but it necessarily won't show you when you're downloading it. If you're using but I say it, yes to everything, I'm sorry. I say yes to everything. It asked me to yeah. minute. The minute you click on your phone that you're accepting to download it, you accept all those terms and services with it. Okay. But oh, okay. There's um, and one of the things that I'll I'll mention also later in the program is that there is a uh, tech tech help at Pasadena Public Library, um, and I'll share that information. It's also on our website. So for anyone who needs further one-on-one -on -one help with uh, their phone, with Zoom, with any of that, the Pasadena Public Library has a service that will be able to help. Um, so Sally, I see your hand. We have a few other questions that um, I want to get to quickly. Um, Thank you. So Pete, if you want to take a quick question at the chat, um, I will just uh, mention that uh, uh, someone asks, you know, how are you simply able to click on a link and join right away versus having to type a meeting ID and a passcode? Uh, and I can answer that while Pete's looking at the at the the questions. Um, it uh, if you have the link, it'll click through either to a waiting room or to the meeting, depending upon how the host set up the meeting. Um, if you are joining from the app itself, you would have to type in the meeting number and a passcode to get into the meeting. And it just depends on whether you're joining from a link somebody sent you or you're using the number to type it in. So, I've seen a question where it says um, your field of, how to decrease your photo field. Are you talking about just as far as your camera, um, Rosali? Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah. Re realistically, unless you are using a secondary camera, like I'm using a, I'm using my, uh, my stock Apple camera on my MacBook. There's no real way to kind of change that. Um, I know there's a lot of people who can do, they've hooked up their cameras itself to it and does that. Um, unless you go in deep into that realm, 
um, you're pretty much getting what you're doing. The best thing you could do is just adjust it as best as possible and kind of just move yourself wherever you're looking to go. Um, I hope that kind of answered your question. Um, how do you um, share docs? You could share your docs if that option is enabled through your chat function. If you were to click your chat function, um, if you want to send it to the entire file, to the entire, I'm sorry, to the entire uh, room, then there's a file option right there where you can click that and then just like anything else, pick a file and send it to everybody. Or you could just directly send it to one person or to everybody. Um, and that would be done through your chat option. Um, how do you make or get a profile photo? Aha, now that's a good one. Um, I love profile photos. Um, so if you want to do that, what you would do is basically same same thing. You would go to your uh, settings, either at the at the main part of your Zoom uh, app, or you can even just click where it has um, any of the arrows on the bottom where it says mute. Or once you click up, you could have you could either click video settings, and then there's a general. Or you can even go down to where it's general, and then I think all the way down where it says general, and then you go down to profile. Um, when you click your profile, you have the option to kind of fiddle around with different stuff right there. Edit my profile, and you can create a uh, you can create a profile picture as such. And that profile picture, as Alice asks, that that just if you choose not to turn on your camera, that profile Correct. picture is what shows up instead of your Correct. name. Correct. So yeah. So. I took off my camera right now. Oh, I'm just a bone arrow. I'm not, or I'm not, I'm or rose, I should say. Um, yeah, but that's how it'll come. Okay. Um, I'm going to interrupt the chat questions for a moment to go to Sally DeVore, who had a question. So hey, I've unmuted you, Sally. Go ahead okay. and ask. Okay, the reason I always have to raise my hand is I can put something in chat and then they told me to push the space bar, but it doesn't work. How do I so make it go to you? The enter button. Press the enter button. What's the enter on the back? The return? Return. Re oh, okay. That's all I need to know. <laughs> I'm sorry. Type and press return. And, um, I, and I think. I the space bar. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Um, and for just a, again, for the chat, you can chat to one person or you can chat to everybody. Um, and if you're chatting to one person, um, be sure that you pick their name and you don't tell everybody something. Um, so there's lots and lots of questions coming in. So Pete, while you scroll through those questions, I'm gonna call on Donna Grady. So Donna, what's your question? I just have a quick question. Is there a particular version that we should be using right now? I'm like, when I get off of a call sometimes, um, it'll say version number five, is that the latest? So the latest is always the better one. Um, and that's for many different reasons. Um, if it ever prompts you to, uh, if you're using it from a phone or you're using it from a tablet, chances are it'll probably just update for you or you go to your app store. But if you are from a, on a MacBook, it'll prompt you and say, um, please update to this. Go ahead and update it. Always use the newest version that they're offering because it'll probably, well, it's a twofold. It's going to fix a lot of bugs that happened in the previous version, but then at the same time, we may add some bugs too. So um, I know there was one version that because I knew what, what it would do, I held off so much on updating it until I finally was forced to. So it's really up to you. You know your Zoom better than anybody. But um, as of right now, because of all the security issues that's going on, they're always updating security options. So. I would go ahead and say, if it prompts you to do that, you can go ahead and just update that version. Always use the newest version. And how do you do that if you have a PC? If you have a PC, um, it'll either, one, you go through your Zoom app and there should be an options area. Mac's a little bit different because I could just go to the top, so I don't know off the PC exactly. I wanna say you're gonna go to your, your general settings as well, and then you should scan for update. Or you could go to zoom.us, Mm -hmm. Go to support, and it'll allow you download the newest version. Oh yeah, yeah, they can get it, but have to wait. Not my time yet. They they give only the only the healthcare worker right now. Yeah, well that's good. Okay. <laughs> 
All right. So um, as we as we continue, as I said, there's a, a bunch of questions coming in. We had uh, a question um, for, and first of all, for everyone who um, I'm going to sort of keep you muted unless you um, unless you unmute yourself. So we'll just keep the background uh, noise down. So there was a question about how to put a background video up. Um, so if you want to mention, talk about that a little bit and I mean the background um, and when that works and when that doesn't work. Whoop, up, are you, you're muted. There we go. There we go. Um, with that, um, again, you would go down to your video option. Um, you would go to your video option and then under, once you click that little, right where it says stop video or start video, whichever it is, that little arrow pointing up, you would choose your virtual background. And from your digital, from that is where you're able to choose your different backgrounds as well as videos and all of that stuff. Now, um, virtual backgrounds are one thing. Um, if you have, I have seen people do it with the video or where it's moving and it's animated and stuff. Uh, understand that that will, that will drop the quality of your Zoom, um, especially if other people, now if everybody's running on the high speed internet known to man, it's not even an issue. Go ahead, um, virtual background all you want, but at the same time, just keep in mind that if you're using a virtual background, um, plan on staying stationary the way I am, because if not, the minute you move, it's going to start doing funny things with your faces, trying to compensate, trying to follow along. So um, if you're doing it for fun with some friends, by all means, go ahead, click that little arrow up, go to uh, visual background or virtual back, choose virtual background or choose video filter um, and go ahead and use that. But from a professional standpoint, I've seen a lot of people have professional meetings trying to cover the background and the minute they move, everything goes blurry with them as well. Um, so that would be my one recommendation for that. Is spectrum high speed? It, depending on the spectrum speed that you have, uh, I've had no problem. That's who I have, spectrum. Okay, we have a question from Anna Vasquez. So I am uh, unmuting you, Anna. You can go ahead and talk. Thank you. Um, I have an iPhone that I use, but I'm kind of uh, limited as far as, you know, screen and whatnot. But I think I've tried it once on my iPad, but my iPad is back in 2012. So I'm not sure, um, you know, if it's the best to use. And also I have a MacBook Pro that's dated like 2007. So is there any way I could use, uh, do Zoom on that? And I'm not sure, uh, I haven't even tried it. Perhaps I should. Um, on your iPad, you may be able to, your MacBook, if it does, see zoom does a great job of kind of of kind of working with any device you give with it um but it does have its limitations as well so that's really just a trial and error type of deal your ipad may get away with it your macbook chances are if you do get it to load it may overheat because zoom sucks in a lot of what you call the physical memory off the computer um, and it may or may not be able to handle it. So there's no real set answer unless you you uh, trial and error that. Okay, I'm, uh, um, I know that there are still some, some other questions, but we've actually got a bunch more stuff to cover. Um, so, and some of the more uh, uh, specific stuff, uh, let me uh, add my spotlight here. Um, some of the things about sharing videos and all of that are kind of Zoom 2.0. Um, most of the point when you're just watching or participating in a Zoom, uh, you're not going to need to know some of those things. And again, the Pasadena Public Library should be able to help with, uh, with some of those questions. Um, I did also want to um, uh, add to what Pete was saying that one of the challenges of Zoom is that um, it, uh, things change depending upon your device, depending upon your bandwidth. So if you're having trouble with audio or trouble with video, uh, it may very well be because your Wi-Fi is low or you have an older device or you're on a laptop or you're on a phone. Um, I, I run many 
uh, many Zooms. I host, I should say, Pete runs them. Um, I host the Zoom programs for, for the Senior Center, many of them. And I will have, you know, 90 people on the Zoom that are able to watch and listen just fine. And there will be one person who keeps being kicked off all the time, who just can't stay on the Zoom. And that often has to do because of your particular device you are listening from. Um, also, where you are in relation to where the Wi-Fi is in your house. Um, since I've been working from home, my Wi-Fi is in a room at the front of the house. If I try to host a Zoom from the back of the house, I, I myself keep getting kicked off the internet because my modem can't get the Wi-Fi to the back of the house. Um, so just be aware of, of where you are in relation to your Wi-Fi source, how many, uh, how many bars you have, uh, if you're on a, a connected uh, uh, PC, uh, how fast your internet is. Um, and like last night when the whole world is on some sort of device watching the news, uh, there will be less bandwidth and you may have a harder time with audio and video. Uh, so we're actually gonna shift over. Uh, this is a great conversation, keep the questions coming. Uh, we're gonna move over to uh, visit with uh, Lynn Meal, our, our other guest here, to talk about some protocols on Zoom. So Pete, if you can, uh, if you can find Lynn and, and Spotlight her, add her to the spotlight. Uh, we're gonna talk about sort of how to use Zoom, uh, some etiquette, some protocol, and some tips. And some of it is all very, uh, engage together. So things that might be a technical issue might also be a best practices or best uses. So keep your tech questions coming on the chat. Pete will be watching that and answering you as he can. Um, and also at the end of this, uh, I will be able to download the chat questions and uh, we can look and see if anybody needs to have anything followed up. Uh, so welcome, Lynn. Thank you so much for joining us. And uh, you've had to be on Zoom a whole lot lately, huh? Yeah, and just like you, Annie, on March 17th, or actually we knew a few days before that, um, I teach at um, Occidental College and we went out for spring break and we all received an email and said, you're not coming back. But your classes, we had another um, two months to teach. By the way, your classes need, you need to put your classes and now teach online. No one, college, if, any, if you know anything about the college, it's not a online college. Everything is in, um, you know, everything is um, face to face. So we did a lot of learning Zoom. So Annie and I are in the same boat of, come, you know, beginning of March is learn everything you can. And, you know, it takes a while to realize you can't, you shouldn't be afraid of it. Um, and it does strange things. And sometimes you just go like anything else to do with the internet and you know, lost in cyberspace, whatever. Um, but anyway, I'm happy to be here. And I'm going to talk a little bit about best practices. Um, I've spent a lot of time taking Zoom classes on how to teach using Zoom and how to use different kinds of strategies. So I just want to share um, some of those with you. And I've been kind of monitoring the chat too. And so there's several questions that have two components to it. As you know, Annie was saying, it's got a technical component to it, um, which, so it's great that Pete's here because he can answer the technology part of it. But also I am going to kind of go through video and talk about audio video. Um, and some of the uh, physical aspects of participating in Zoom. And you, and hopefully you can, you know, a few things you can just take away from it. Um, you know, it's will be, I'll be showing you a lot of things not to do. Um, and sometimes we just are not aware of, um, you know, aware of how we appear to people because they can't see us. So I'm gonna talk about lighting. I'm gonna be talking about those things. So, um, and again, please add your questions to Zoom and then we will have time um, to, for any um, questions at the end. So starting with a couple of things about audio. Okay, so we're using Zoom for a whole lot of things. Um, if in fact, 
we had 12 people for this in this meeting, we probably would have encouraged people to have their audio on. And one of the reasons in a small group, we can see each other by putting in the gallery view, that two of you, the gallery, we get to see each other. And when you get to interact with people, that's the closest thing to how we interact with people. I get to see you, it's spontaneous. Um, I am answering your question. Um, we thought the number, because you know, before the world changed yesterday, there were about 30 people or, that were enrolled uh, in the class and we were kind of debating, okay, we could probably do both things. And then all of a sudden it skyrocketed to what 105 or something, which meant we had to change it. So if you have to remember, it's not just the fact of you talking or not talking, it's a lot of the noises that you have. And again, as Pete pointed out, depending upon your device, and how you have your setting, sometimes you hear that. Uh, I, I've gone to so many meetings where we've had to ask people, you know, could you put your dog in another room? Because we, and we like the dog, we just can't hear over the dog. So think about, do you want your audio? And sometimes it's pre-directed. Like when we got so big, we made a decision for the, for the purposes of just running smoothly, the, audio, uh, the video, uh, or excuse me, the audio would be off and you can unmute yourself. So it's kind of you know, a compromise of the um, best of both worlds. Also think about, um, you know, do you want, how, how you see yourself? If you look at your picture right now, your little your photo, find yourself and, and look at your picture right now, that's exactly what everybody is, is, is seeing. So if you play with your um, video, so if I were to um, come in and talk and I see people that lecture this way, do you really want that face, you know? And you're all lovely. We're all lovely people. But if you're here, that's what everybody is saying. So it's also a little distracting because they're not listening to what you're saying. They're thinking, wow, get your nose out of there. Um, so you have to kind of, you know, you have, you have to, to um, to think, um, think about those things. So go, um, kind of a couple more things with the- um, Actually, Lynn, I'm gonna, I, I'm just gonna jump in and add something quickly there. Is that um, as, as you and I had discussed earlier, there's also um, posture issues with Zoom. Um, and I'll just, uh, I'll just quick add myself here. Um, I've just had to do a, a virtual doctor visit and a physical therapy for my lower back going out. And it's because I've been hunched over my keyboard and leaning into Zoom. And he said, put a lumbar pillow and sit back. And as Lynn also showed me, if you are sitting back against your chair and supporting your back, you also can't be rocking back and forth as you talk. You just stay back, you have a better look and you save your back so that you actually can walk around later on. And if you spend a lot of hours on Zoom, your body knows that. Um, you know, they're um, orthopedic surgeons now. And these are, you know, these are things that we didn't really even think about because when did we ever think that our life would be that Zoom would be a major component of how we how we interact uh, interact with people. So, particularly if you're going to Zoom a lot, is that you want to find a place that you can keep a pretty good posture. And um, you know the point about, and I think Pete made it when because we try to get fancy and we put virtual backgrounds and everything. Well, if you're moving around and you got a virtual background, you'd be surprised. My students tell me is because we were playing with a lot of ways of, of you know, what was the best in the class, et cetera, is they thought the greatest one is there's a pool, a scene of a pool at Occidental. Well, it turns out they thought it was the greatest one for me to go on because when I moved to write on, on my whiteboard, my head went underwater. And so I was headless, it, it went into it. So they thought that, so obviously that wasn't a good teaching tool, you know, a good teaching tool. But do watch, do watch your posture because we have a tendency to always kind of move forward like we're talking to, talking to somebody, but moving back um, saves a lot on um, saves a lot on your back. 
And also again, the trick with the pillow, it kind of prevents you from moving, from uh, bounce, uh, bouncing around. And also Lynn, how about not turning your video on? Okay, that's my next one that I'm just about to go into. Okay, so video. I have like with my video, if I turn uh, my, um, well, I don't want to turn that off, is um, think about why, what the purpose of your Zoom is. If it's something, you know, um, and the Senior Center has such wonderful, wonderful opportunities. Um, there's a lot of social type activities. Well, if somebody invited to your house and you have 12 people are invited to your house, you'd want to see them if you're interacting and it's a kind of a, it's a social thing. So, you know, the purpose then makes sense to have your video. You're with your, these people that you know, they want to chat, they want to chat with you. Okay. However, you could um, have uh, in something along if we were any bigger and it almost was like a webinar type thing where somebody was lecturing at you and fine just to um, chat is that maybe you don't need your video, okay? Also, if you're having technical problems, the bandwidth for, um, for the video is a, a broader bandwidth. So a lot of times if you're having problems like your face is freezing, et cetera, if you turn off your video, people can still see you uh, or excuse me, they can still hear you is that that might help it. But I always tell people to think about where you're, you know, think of what you're attending and would that be something you'd want to see faces? Um, you know, you certainly wouldn't want to have um, a happy hour party and have no faces. And so you're talking into names. Um, so that's, you know, something that, um, that you should um, think about. And you also should think about, again, this kind of goes back of how you, how you come across um, on video. And lighting is very important with, um, uh, with the video. So because I spend during the academic year, I spend anywhere from eight to 10 hours a day on Zoom. Um, and I'll talk about Zoom fatigue in a minute. Um, but on, on Zoom, so lighting part is important. Um, so right now I have lights. Now, a couple of just real important, little simple things about lights. The lighting should always come from in front of you, not from behind you, okay? So right now I have, it's, a, it's called a ring light um, because when I teach, a lot of mine have to be, uh, I have to record everything. So if right now I'm gonna turn it off, okay? So when you look at me is, you know, it is, there's more, sh there's more shades. When I put on the light is that it's a brighter, you know, my, my face comes across and if I'm talking with you or talking to you is that you really wanna highlight, you, you want to be able to see, to read my face. You always want to read face because that's how we interact with people. We know when they're happy. We know when they're sad. I know when students are about ready to doze off because those little eyes are going like this. So we read fa we read faces. So you want to make sure people can can um, read your face. Different kinds of light have different kind of effects. I'll just like the. Uh, Okay, the one that I have, I have different kinds of lights so that I can have harsh lights, I can have daylight, you can play with all kinds of uh, lighting. This kind of lighting ring is very, inex is very inexpensive. You can get them for like 20 bucks. Um, you also can just simply put a light behind it. If you have any kind of, uh, you know, a lamp, you put the lamp behind your, com your computer. Now, I'm going to take this and demonstrate two things of not doing, okay? So one of them is do not move around, do not take your laptop or your phone or whatever it is and walk around the house because everybody gets to walk with you. So as I'm walking around the house to get to my next point, you know, you can see what's going on in my house. You can, if I move this way, you can see I'm put, taking down my Christmas tree, didn't quite get to it. So I pushed it on the side, but look what happens when I'm here. Okay. So right now I have the, um, 
light right behind me. I'm right in front of a window. And so it's hard to make out, you know, make out my face. Okay. So just think the easiest thing, light and be it comes from, um, is it always in front of you? It's never behind you. And one of the things that you can do that's a really easy thing to do, if you have any kind of smart form or phone or iPad or you, a laptop, it doesn't matter which you do, which you have. If you um, walk around your house and um, flip it to, so you're going to do a selfie, take a selfie. So you bring it up to um, you know, your camera and then just flip your camera around like you're doing a selfie. That is the lighting that everyone will see. So you can kind of find where's the best place to zoom in the morning or to you know zoom in the evening because as the light and depending how much how many windows you have in your house, um, it will kind of determine what's the best place at what time of the day. You know some people um, you know don't really care. Uh, they say you know I'm on Zoom, it doesn't matter. But people get to see you. They get to see. Whatever you see when you look at yourself on Zoom, that's what everybody else, everybody else is um, uh, seeing. There's also in kind of the advanced settings, there's this really cool setting that I love that you can go in there that kind of softens the wrinkles. It's in this advanced, I can't, it's got a specific name, but that'll be in Zoom 2.0 um, of how you can, how you can um, do the, um, you know, you can take, you can take a few wrinkles away. Um, but you can also do it with, you, you know, you can do this uh, with uh, lighting. Okay. Um, I took some um, actually, I'm going to jump in here for a moment, uh, Lynn, to uh, as some of the, the things that we talked about. So again, I'm going to, to reiterate that if you are listening to a program, especially if there's a lot of people in the program, and you're if you want to be seen or you want the presenter to see you, make sure that you can see yourself. So it's not really narcissistic to continually check how you look in your video. So I'm like, okay, I better fix my hair. All right, I'm you know moving. But um, every single time I do some Zoom event, there's somebody who has their camera like that. And why even turn your camera on? because we can't see you. I, I don't need to see your ceiling and you will have better audio if you simply turn off your video. I can still see everything that's going on. I can still be heard, but you don't have to look at my ceiling. Um, so I give you all permission to turn off your video unless you are specifically want to be seen at that moment by the other people, and obviously if you're a host. Um, but I think that we don't often think, you know, it's it's like I'm I'm here, I should be seen, but it's it's okay for your your name or your placeholder picture to be there instead. And it's all about, you know, kind of remember what's the purpose of your Zoom. You know, if it's something that's really social, you want to see your friends. That's what, what would, you know, we do Zoom to stay socially connected. So being, being able to see somebody is, is, is really um, helpful. The other thing um, to think about is that usually the placement of, um, you know, the best in terms of health in your uh, uh, back and neck, et cetera, is that you really should Zoom in a seated position. Uh, students, I have students that roll out of bed and some of them don't even roll out of bed. They have their laptop and they're like this and they're laying in bed, um, which I had to finally go, can't do this anymore. Guys, make your beds. I don't want to see your beds. Um, is, but you also want to think about it is you are, you um, have, a, it's a better shot if it is high to low so that your camera is at an angle of above you and coming down. If I were to, and I use um, a rise um, for two reasons and a rise, it's, it's, it's kind of a, it's a, a filtered box. And the reason I use it is for two reasons. One of them is that because I'm on Zoom so much, my laptop overheats all the time. 
because I have, uh, you know, I have the case of the laptop and it's on a table. So there's no air circulating around um, the, uh, the, the laptop. And so it has a tendency to, to overheat. So I prop mine up and so that there's kind of air circulating or there's, there's some air that will get into it. And the other reason, so if I were to move mine without, and I'm gonna put it down here. So if I were, you, you know, you get, you can have this, it's, you know, not exactly what I want you all to see, okay? So if in fact, now this is a high, this is a low to high. So when I come and I, if I talk, you all don't want to see if I have no nasal hair, okay? So you want to think of it of going from high to high to low, okay? Um, because when we talk to people, when we interact with people, generally we're in a position, so they're not below us, they are at our level or ab above us. So it's just like I'm kind of thinking of how do you, how do you replicate real interaction? And that's what you, um, you know, that's what you try to do about um, Zoom. Couple of things that I, I just want to hit upon is, um, I'm going to uh, call it Zoom fatigue and Zoom migraines, okay, is humans right now, we may evolve into this, are not really, uh, we're, we're not geared to sit in front of and looking at a screen and getting constant visual information. And so what happens is that our eyes, we have get a lot of fatigue uh, with our, um, our, our eye, just basic eye fatigue. Um, and so, you know, it's people um, w from a teaching standpoint, and they're doing tons of research right now because it's new. And so people want to figure out how, to, how do you make it better, is that sometimes you really just have to cut things up. Like this one, we're, we're breaking it into, there's two sections, and then we have some, um, we've got chat, we're monitoring chat. We also have questions and answer, and we're kind of moving it out, around. And one of the reasons for that is so that you're not all just staring, you're engaging differently all the time, which takes a little bit of the, the strain, um, takes the overall kind of the, the Zoom fatigue. Um, one of the uh, problems that the, what they're finding with college students is that they spend so much time on Zoom and they go to their classes on Zoom, but now they have to all interact on Zoom and it, you know they're active, active young people. So they're probably on Zoom 12 to 15 hours a, a, a day is that you have a lot of fatigue that goes with it. Um, and many students are developing Zoom and they right now they're just referring it to them as Zoom migraines. And part of it, they're finding out it also has to do with how the pixels on, how, it, how the light's hitting your eyes, et cetera. But it kind of, it, is if you have problems with headaches or migraines, is that you know the advice is really break it up. Do not constantly zoom. Go out for a walk. Go out and you know do something before so your body and your mind's not not fatigued. Um, the other thing um, that is a benefit, it's both positive and negative. Okay, so we all know that nobody can, unless you're dancing and you're standing up, nobody can see you from the waist down. So sometimes we get a little lax in how we present ourselves because nobody's gonna see it anyway. I mean, I've gotten really good of wearing uh, jackets and all kinds of stuff, full makeup and everything else and my jammies and slippers on when I teach. Okay, so I admit it. And it's comfortable, but what I have found, and this is more the psychological part of it, if I kind of dress and force myself to make it real as though I were doing whatever it is. So when I teach a class is that I try to, you know, I try to, um, you know, if I'm teaching, if I'm going to my office, I take a shower before I go to work. Yeah, you know, now I'm probably revealing too much. I can get by, you know, if I'm not doing anything, I don't have to do it every day. Well, it's more of a psychological preparation for it is you want to be able to enjoy it 
and by enjoying something is that you're kind of framing it how it should be done. So I've noticed that you've got great Zoom parties is if it's a dance party, you know what? Get, feel like you're going to a dance. Um, don't be in your pajamas. Um, you know, yeah, put the little, um, put the, the time in and it's more about, um, you know, Zoom fatigue and mental fatigue that goes, that goes with it. Um, you, you might, I did a whole host of uh, events around Christmas time and we made sure that everybody who was participating, um, whether it was a sweater contest, whether it was a wear your best hat contest, whether it was whatever it was that engaged people to feel good about it and to feel like it is as close as you can come to interacting with people and, and not be make, making, um, making, con, uh, making contact with people. Um, Let's see, anything else? Annie, did I forget anything that we? Um, I, I think that's a, a lot of the stuff that, uh, that we, we talked about, the lighting, the positioning, uh, <laughs> knowing where, what you look like when you're, when you're on, um, what you sound like. Um, and just, and it is part of a community and you do, you, you wouldn't, uh, you would care how you looked if you came into a public place. So Zoom is a public place unless you are Zooming with your family. And, you know, so, so it's, a, it's definitely, um, there is a, an etiquette to it. And as we talked a little bit about, um, about audio, um, so I'll just uh, join, join you here again. Um, that just like video, best practices is always keep your, your microphone off unless you are actively in a conversation. Um, not only does it help the background um, from what, uh, you know, so the background noise, but um, you never wanna be uh, caught with an open mic saying something that you don't want the whole group to hear. Um, I myself in an early Zoom event, something went wrong and I, I said a bad word I should have said. I didn't even actually realize I'd said it until somebody watched the video and said, oh, you shouldn't have said that. I'm like, I never curse. What did I say? Oops. Um, so <laughs> always, you know, if you're ever in doubt, just check down and is, that, is, is there a little red line through your microphone? Um, always, uh, always good to be prepared that way. Um, so, so definitely. Uh, so we'll, uh, we'll open up again in a moment to some questions. So um, let's, uh, let's bring you back into the conversation here, Pete. Hey guys. <laughs> so um, I, I've set a poll. We're just kind of curious, not, not that we're wrapping it up yet um, necessarily, but there is a poll. So on the bottom section where you see the share screen, it's a little different for us, but there's a area or it may have prompted a pop-up where it's asking you just a couple questions as far as uh, where you heard about this presentation and how you guys have joined us, what platform. So a lot of the times um, when you're in Zoom, if you guys haven't had it, this is what they call polling. So depending on what presentation you are doing, they will set polls out just to kind of pick your brain about anything, realistically. Um, so I know a couple of people that are in my fitness class are here. So I was kind of playing around with the polling, just random questions here and there. But it's also a good insight, too, because it gives us an idea if this were, a, you know, a different training, we could say, OK, um, are you comfortable? Was this too well too like intermediate was it too beginner was it too advanced and that's how we kind of uh pull different things so with this this is just questioning how you figured out or how did you hear about this particular presentation so if you guys uh go ahead and click i see 43 or 54 people have already voted yeah the miracle of zoom i mean there are some some kind of amazing things we can do um, and things like uh, answering polls, um, answering chats, doing all of that, um, it, it, it can help you be engaged. And as Lynn was saying, um, gets you not just staring with your eyes at the screen, but, but 
engaging engaging the rest of you. So that's why we, we thought we'd, uh, we'd do this little poll. And I will just do another shout out at Pete, who created that in about five minutes, about five minutes before we started. How do you so. <laughs> how do you make a poll? So um, on the poll, if I'm not sure if that's available under a free option, but if you are under, if you are doing it, when you set up a meeting, uh, there is an option all the way to the bottom of the meeting setup where it says um, create a poll, and you could it's not limited to just one. You could have one off of so if there was a poll about you know, rating me as a pres as a presenter. And then um, I could have another one uh, rating Annie, I could have another one rating Lynn, um, your favorite color, whatever you want, you could have 20 different polls going on at one time. And that's usually set up underneath the uh, when you do the options, or in this case, we weren't sure we didn't know we were going to do it. So um, as a host, we have a polling option that's a button for us next to our share screen option. Um, and then I just created a quick poll, which still linked me back to the website. Um, so it might be a little bit easier to do on a computer platform as opposed to a tablet or a phone. Yeah, and Anna says that you can't poll on iPhone. Yeah, and that's probably, it's probably, there's stuff that's really limited to just uh, computers and stuff. Um, it, it really depends on which iPhone um, that you have. Uh, newer iPhones may be a possibility. Um, it really just depends on the screen, but I would think on any type of mobile device, polling may not be an option. Yeah, the, um, on the 11 and 12, iPhone 11 and 12, you can poll. Right, okay. You can um, poll, um, but if you have a free account, you cannot create a, uh, a poll. You have to have one of the larger uh, packages, um, which uh, I'm sure the, the center has that, obviously. Right. Um, I did see a question on there, um, Jerry, where it says, can you review recordings in meetings? So uh, as far as the recordings that go in the meetings, um, that is really up, that is really up to um, the host. So again, this comes down to a paid feature type of deal. Um, I don't know if the free option allows you to record. And if it does, you get very limited storage space for it. Um, we do have a paid account. But even though you have a paid account, that's still, we have to pay additional for cloud storage as well. So um, it really just depends on, uh, we record all of our classes for various different reasons, uh, quality control, um, people miss classes, people miss sessions. So, um, and that option is usually pretty, you could stop it, you could pause it and you could resume it. So- But we um, also, Pete, um, the host gets to choose whether people can record the program on their own. Okay. So um, our, because of um, our proprietary issues, um, we do, we have the setting so you can't, um, you can't record it to your own computer while it's happening. Is that right. correct? Okay. Yeah, so yes. that if you want that, and if we had set the, if we had set up the meeting differently, then you would be able to record while we record, um, but we have it set so that you can't. So it yeah, kind of depends think, on what the, how the host has set it. Right, and I that was one of the first settings I've changed, and that's only because um, it's uh, it's classes, you know, and if we have everyone download it, then we can't yeah. offer these classes because you would already have them downloaded. Um, how do you get a number and password for a meeting? Um, that's pretty simple. That's when you set up your meeting um, and you click you click the meeting. Um, you could go ahead. It gives you a default number. Um, it's some ridiculously long number sometimes. You can actually just take that, highlight it, erase it, and create whatever you want um, for that password. Um, the number is actually uh, generic, so you cannot pick what the meeting ID is. That's just done randomly or they do what it's your personal meeting ID, which is um, every, if you have a registered or authorized Zoom account, um, you have a specific number. So you can have a meeting that is specifically that number and you could create a password or a waiting room, or you just do a generic one. And for security reasons, I always just use the, let it just generate a brand new one. So every class session we have at the Pasadena Senior Center, we offer, um, a different Zoom link for every session, just for security measures. 
Uh, and I'm also now going to put in the chat the link to the place on our website with the information for Pasadena Library Tech um, support. Um, so anyone, you can, and you can just cut and paste off of the chat onto whatever on your computer to save it. Um, and you're also welcome to email me for information afterwards. So let's see. Um, and Ted, I see that you said um, pin video feature. Um, specifically, um, there's two different things, and I see a lot of um, people that are offering classes, they have a tendency to mix up the two. Um, when you pin somebody, um, if you're, let's say we're, like for instance, you're joining this Zoom right now with five of your closest friends, you could all pin them next to each other so that you guys could see each other in a box. Um, but a lot of people tend to think that because you're pinned, everyone could see you're pinned, even though you are, if you are presenting, if you are presenting and you want everyone to see you, you want to use a spotlight option. So if that is something that you're kind of asking towards, um, spotlight, just like anything else, if you're the spotlight of the show, everyone sees you. And that's the same thing on zoom. You can spotlight yourself and you are the center of attention. If you just pin them, that just means you're the only ones who could see those specific pins. I hope I answered your question, Ted. And uh, I got a question from Randy that came just directly to me. Is there a limit on how many Zoom meetings one can have with a free account? Um, I don't actually know the answer to that because I do all my Zooming through the Senior Center. Pete? <laughs> um, there, oh, I think two oh. people can meet for any length of time for free account, three or more can meet for. So yeah, so yeah. That's, that's, yeah, it's, how many meetings itself there is a limitation of how many people could be in there um which i believe um gary has it correct um but um there isn't really a time limit or there really isn't you could set up as much meetings just know they will cut off um they could cut off they will yeah, cut off like 45 minutes or something right something like that and they will go now for the holidays and for as long as we're going through these apocalypse zoom has been very generous as far as giving out um free time so i think on Christmas they allowed like 12 hours or something. Um, and I don't know about New Year's, but there will be times. So if you are trying to meet with people on Zoom, um, just keep an eye out for Zoom updates um, where they will allow ex extra time limits so you can meet with your family as well and you don't have to pay additional for that. And I'll also just make a, a, little, uh, a little pitch that it's, um, we're all learning as we're going. Zoom is learning as it's going. It's all kind of a, a crowdsourced uh, collaborative effort. Um, it is very likely that, especially us here in Los Angeles County, that this uh, state of things will go on for many more months. I don't know how many more, but it's likely to, to last longer than we want it to, which means that we're going to be on Zoom for quite a while to come. So. I'd really like to invite you all to give us feedback about our Zoom events. What do you like watching on Zoom? What do you like participating in? What's helpful to you? Because at the Senior Center, we all try to be really um, proactive and responsive to the needs of the community. And we've, uh, we've thrown a lot of spaghetti at the wall and a bunch of it has stuck and some of it hasn't. Uh, but it's an ongoing, it's an ongoing experience and an ongoing thing that we all are in together. I mean, this is, this is what we have to, uh, uh, to connect with each other. So keep, keep us informed and other, other people and places that you do Zoom with it. it feedback really helps. Uh, so let's see, we've got a few more questions going on here. Oh yeah, switch gallery to single um, to single speaker image. Do you want to talk about the different ways that that looks, Pete? Yeah. So um, your gallery view essentially, um, even if a speaker is highlighted, um, where they've spotlighted themselves, on the view section that's either on the top right hand corner, um, if you were to switch over to um, the gallery view, you would you would see everybody um regardless of who spotlighted um if you were to just keep it on speaker view you will see specifically who is highlighted um or spotlighted i should say and then um if they have actually um the active speaker um if no one is spotlighted whoever is making the most noise will get the green box around their theirs 
and that's who you will see on everybody else's. And I'll also mention, because I'm on a, on a laptop, so that's where I'm doing this from, that if you change, um, so when you, on the view option, you can be in full screen or exit full screen. And if I'm on gallery view and I exit full screen, it, it's, it will change where, where some things appear. Um, speaker view um, on uh, non full screen, I, I still see uh, some of the, the gallery, but if I go to full screen, they disappear and I just see the highlighted people. So, so full screen and exit full screen are, uh, will give you a different look on your, uh, on your desktop, um, on your, on your monitor. So as uh, someone said, good, you know, chance to experiment. Um, you can change from speaker view to gallery view. Um, and then when you are on, um, on speaker view, there's the little box for who's talking. And there's, um, there's four little, at least on my laptop, there's four little steps. There's one, one bar, a rectangle, two lines, and a grid. And as you click on those, you'll see the, the straight line is nothing except the spotlights or the screen share. The medium box gives you the speaker view. Um, the double box gives you some of the gallery people and the whole grid gives you everybody or as many more people as you can. So one of the things that I hear from, uh, from folks who, who don't do Zoom as much, they are so irritated by seeing all those people with their videos on who are moving around or talking to their friend or petting their dog, you can get rid of them by simply going to speaker view or during a presentation, getting rid of everything and just clicking that one low bar that gets rid of every extraneous video and indeed even the speaker. So you can control how much of the audience you see. Um, and I think that that's a really valuable tool especially in a group where there's a lot of people who are you know, moving around or somebody started to do something very distracting and you don't wanna see it, you can just get, it, get rid of it. <laughs> and you know, the one thing that I'll just add to keep in mind is that um, when you're playing with your screen, it is your screen. You're not messing up anybody else. You're, you have to be a host or a co-host to be able to um, you know, have a setting that impacts everyone. So I may not want, you know, I may just really only want to talk, to see the speaker, or I may want to see everybody. It's only on my screen. So whatever you do is only on your screen. And you also might also think about, consider how big of a screen you're looking at. You know, if we, um, if you're on a large screen, it's a little bit easier on the eyes, but if you're on a, if you're on your a smartphone, you really, being on a gallery view, do it sometime, a gallery on a smartphone, particularly if you have something below like an eight, so it's a smaller thing. It is, you can't, they're just little dots and there's, you see little, you see movement. So think about what's, what's the most comfortable for your eyes. Remember we just we talked about eye strain and all. So think about how big of a, how big of a, a, of a screen that you have and what works best, but Keep in mind, you're only doing it to your screen. You're not messing. You know, I always thought I was going to mess everything up, but then I realized as host, I was. But other than that, um, you know, it is uh, only your screen. Great. Right. Thank you, Lynn. I think that uh, we'll, we'll start to wrap things up. So um, I'm going to, uh, uh, to remove our spotlights for a moment so that if yeah, you I'm could... Mention one more thing, Annie, um, yeah. oh, sure. just because um, actually Lynn actually brought up a good point about laptops overheating. Um, I've actually got uh, a lot of people saying my laptops gets really hot. These are specifically for that. Um, one thing I do want to share with everybody, this is probably my best $20 investment I've ever made. It's a cooling, it's a cooling rack off okay. of Amazon like this. Um, this keeps the difference. I have everything on my laptop. I edit, I, I'm a photographer. I do a lot of stuff. I do video editing. My laptop sometimes reaches heats up to 110 degrees. This, when I'm using this, 
just taking it off right now, my laptop is hitting 100 right now. With having this, because this has built-in fans, and it even has a cool little light. The cool little light doesn't do anything, but the but the fan is incredible because it keeps my laptop at at least 85 to 90 degrees, um, which will never overheat. It'll never crash. It'll never do anything. So um, if you do, if you are on Prime, you could simply just type in cooling mat, um, and they're about 20 bucks. There's some that are 60, 70 dollars that my friends have got because they want the biggest and the best. And this one has still outlasted them. I'm going about one year with this. So Okay, well, I'm just going to say I use a metal kitchen rack from Container Store that probably costs seven bucks. There you go. Um, it rises up. It's got open grid work. It puts it at a good space for me and it keeps it cool. So that's a good option as well. So as long as you're not suffocating your computer, all of those will help. But if you need the extra push, get one with the fan and you are good to go. So um, for those of you who have written nice things in the chat, thank you very much. I, we will, if, if you liked it, we'll do it again and we'll uh, do a little more. But what I want is just for a moment, everybody go in gallery view because here's what you can do on Zoom. You know, everybody puts up your hands and we all go to the right, right? <laughs> and then we all go to the left. <laughs> so we all we all can do the wave together. <laughs> so and I always I always enjoy watching that happen because really you have to have fun with Zoom because goodness knows there's <laughs> there's not as much fun in our lives as we need. Um, so thank you all. Please do feel free to email me with any of your comments or ideas. Um, we will uh, review all the chats and, uh, and, and learn what we can. Uh, really appreciate your joining us. And again, a huge thank you to Lynn Mail. Thank you, Lynn, you're so awesome. Um, you guys are pretty- I, Can I go back to school to Oxy now and take your classes? <laughs> <laughs> and I, I do have to tell the story is that the first I, you know, try to really get things going in my classes because it's really hard to listen to a lecture. So the very first time it, I did so many things by trial and error and only five days of trying to do it and I tried to try and do too much too soon. So I put people and you can put in breakout rooms and you do that a lot so people can really talk to each other. You can put four people or in the breakout room. So I said, this is the first time I've used a breakout room. Well, they all went to the breakout rooms, got that part, but I had forgotten how I retrieved them. <laughs> so they were in cyberspace. And so I had to email everybody to say, hey, you know what? Thanks for being a good sport. It was, luckily it was like at the end of class, but I never retrieved them back. So, you know, you just have to, you have to laugh at yourself. <laughs> Excellent. And thank you, Pete. Without you, none of this would happen. We are so lucky to have you with us. Um, so thank you, Pete. Thank all of you for joining us because you're why we're here and we appreciate you. And I tell you, if I just had to be, a, well, I'm not alone in my house. I do luckily have my dad with me, but I mean, I can't even imagine life without seeing all these people in these little boxes every day. <laughs> So thank you all and uh, be well and hopefully we'll see you at the classes and the lectures and the programs, tons of stuff coming up. Uh, hope you're on our email list. If not, go to PasadenaSeniorCenter.org and uh, get on our weekly list because it's got lots going on. So thank you all very much and see you next time. <laughs>